everybody this is episode 11 our daily bread free my sheep um <clears throat> pray for us as we begin today about five o'clock we'll be traveling to bluefield west virginia princeton west virginia to preach this this sabbath we'll be leaving a day though so pray for us today <clears throat> our lesson takes us into the book of romans chapter three and i broke my phone thing so i gotta hold my phone but I used to have my hands free, but it's all good. Romans chapter three, verse one says, what advantage then hath the Jew or what profit is there of circumcision? Question mark. What advantage then hath the Jew or what profit is there of circumcision? Much every way chiefly because that unto them were committed the oracles of God much every way chiefly the bible's letting us know that it was given to them chosen by people chosen by god hebrew israelites then called jews the oracles of god the ways of the lord it was committed to them first verse three for what if some did not believe question mark shall their unbelief make the faith of god with none effect god forbid yea let God be true and every man be a liar, as it is written, that thou mightiest be justified in the sayings, and thou mightiest overcome when thou art judged. But if our unrighteousness commendeth the righteousness of God, what shall we say? Is God unrighteous? Who taketh vengeance? I speak as a man. God forbid, for then how shall God judge the world? A lot of questions. Verse 7. For if the truth of God have more abounded through my lie unto glory, why yet am I also judged as a sinner? I like these questions that he's asking because we get these kind of questions today concerning men, doctrines, and traditions of men versus the traditions of God. These are things we deal with, and it's good that he's asking these questions. Verse 7 again. For if the truth of God hath more abounded through my lie unto his glory, why yet am I also judged as a sinner? Then it says, and not rather, in verse 8, and not rather as we be slanderously reported, and as some affirm that we say, let us do evil that good may come, whose damnation is just. What then, in verse 9, are we better than they? No, in no wise. For we have before proved both Jews and Gentiles that they are all under sin. See, people right now are going crazy about the news and what's going on in the news and about Israel and the land. And I believe people get it confused between the people and the land. The land was named after people, not the people after a land. That's all I'm gonna deal with that on because People got to work out that stuff for their own soul salvation and understand what the Spirit is saying to the church. Verse 9, what then? Are we better than they? No, in no wise. For we have before proved both Jews and Gentiles that they are all under sin. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. None righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth. There is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way they are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. Verse 13, their throat is an open sepulcher. With the tongues they have used to see, the poison of an asp is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways. And the way of peace have they not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Now we know that what things soever the law saith is saith to them who are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped, and all the world may become guilty before God. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For by the law is knowledge of sin. But now the righteousness of God, 
without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Verse 22, chapter 3 of Romans. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all of them that believe, for there is no difference. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Verse 25, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. To declare, I say at this time, his righteousness, that he might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. Are you hearing what the Spirit is saying to the church? That's what I said. That's what I put the scripture at. Verse 27. Where is boasting then? It is excluded by what law? Of works. Nay, but by the law of faith. Therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Is he the God of the Jews only? Is he not also of the Gentiles? Yes, of the Gentiles also. I asked this question one time, and I ask it often with people. I said, was Adam a Jew or a Gentile? What was he? He was a male. He was a human male. God created male after his own likeness. Man came along and needed separation of people. God chose the Israelites, Hebrews, for himself. That's what made them who they are. We are not who we are because of something we do. We are who we are because of what he said and what he chose. And that's where a lot of isms and schisms create from. Verse 29 again, is he the God of Jews only? It, is he not also the Gentiles? Yes, of the Gentiles also. We have been engrafted in by faith. Seeing it is one God which shall justify the circumcision by faith and uncircumcision through faith. 31. Do we then make void the law through faith? God forbid. Yea, we establish the law. What shall we say then? That Abraham our father as pertaining to the flesh hath found? Question mark. For if Abraham were justified by works, he hath whereof, whereof to glory, but not before God. For what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. Got to understand what this faith thing is all about according to the word of the living God. We can't create our own form of godliness. It's all by faith. Verse 5 and verse 4, chapter 4, excuse me. Almost done. I'm getting a lot of scripture today for some reason. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Verse 6, even as David also described the, bl the blessedness of a man unto whom God imputed righteousness without works, saying, Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed is a man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. Cometh this blessedness then upon the uncircumcision only or upon the uncircumcision also for we say that faith was reckoned to Abraham for righteousness how was it then reckoned when he was in circumcision or in uncircumcision not in circumcision but in uncircumcision and he received the sign of circumcision, a seal of righteousness, of faith. Read this last scripture in verse 11, chapter 4. And he received the sign of circumcision, a seal of righteousness, of faith, which he had yet been uncircumcised, that he might be the father of them all that believe. Who they be not circumcised, the righteousness might be imputed unto them also.
Word of the living God.